Alrighty, everyone, welcome to part three of DSP versus the Internet, episode 25 for August 6, 2023. I hope you'll check out the first two parts if you missed them. We're moving on to the final two ultra member videos, and then after that, we're going to get to the standard member, which will all be ultra, or uh, excuse me, a uh, random shuffled playlist. Thanks to everyone supporting this channel. Remember, being a, a member is the best way to do that. And uh, let's continue. Let's see what's next. <laughs> uh, man. Nice, you got me. I'll never do it again. Willard Hillard. <laughs> He's having so much fun doing blocker balls. All he's doing is blocking balls and, and hopping back and forth and <laughs> beating these diamond players. He's having a grand time doing it. Oh, man. I'm dying. I cannot handle. I can't hang, bro. What are that was it? That was the whole video? Well, that was really short. Anyway, I guess he was having a good time playing with Blanca. I mean, that's a lot of Blanca gameplay in the game, quite frankly. All right, well, that was a quick one. All right, I think this is our last Ultra Member submission. 15 Las Vegas ripoff scams and tourist traps. All right, we probably won't watch the whole thing. It's 15 minutes, but let's watch some of this. Let's Box, see what they got. Traps and Here we go. Okay. Your money back, and when you put in that voucher in here, it'll give you all the bills, but it won't give you change. Really? So whether it's a quarter, 75 cents, 10 cents, I mean, it's little, right? It's little money, but still, that's your money. It adds money. up. If you try to redeem it here, you're not going to get change. What you need to do is take that voucher straight to the cashier cage and get your change. Even if it takes a little longer to get it from the cashier. Wow, that is sure a ripoff. You're not getting ripped off by this because they don't spit out change. And this is for a that's a really tricky ripoff because most people would probably do that not knowing that and think about how much money they're keeping every day what if what if they owed you uh i don't know ten dollars and 75 cents well you only get ten dollars right so now every transaction they're saving cents now imagine how many hundreds to thousands of people are using that a day so they're making money just on that that's ridiculous why is that even allowed that's really stupid a lot of casinos get your cents back because every cent matters. When I tell you about the ripoff machine, when you get the change from the cash in, cash out, look, 37 cents, it won't give you this 37 cents. You got to go to the cashier. I know it's only 37 cents, but multiply it by all the millions of people that right. come to Vegas. If everyone You're making the same money every day out. making more money off you. That becomes a ripoff. Last ripoff video a couple years ago, I told you about those ripoff games like War, all that other stuff that you should watch out for at the casino. Let me give you a new gambling tip. Beware a triple zero roulette and six to five black triple zero roulette and six to five blackjack games i wonder what those are i don't know what either of those are okay jack most places are six to five blackjack so just be forewarned your chances are definitely lower you're gonna want to find places that either have single deck blackjack or three to two blackjack and there's places like binions el cortez and four queens they all have tables like that at blackjack and if you want to learn to play blackjack go to the downtown grand they have one dollar blackjack where i actually played oh. they also have five dollar craps as well so if you want to just learn go over to the downtown grand and just uh, mess around with five dollar craps one dollar blackjack with the five dollar craps it's only when the sun is out when the sun goes down they said they change it and it goes up so just be aware of six to five huh. blackjack look for three to two and it's usually only in downtown these are, these are good tips for anyone who wants to learn how to do this kind of stuff because that's the point they don't want you to learn they don't want you to go there and spend low money and actually learn how to play the games they want you to screw you over by charging five to ten dollar minimums on a hand of blackjack so you're trying to learn and you blow hundreds of dollars that's exactly right so that's a good tip that he's giving everybody las vegas <clears throat> and uh here on the strip you're pretty much stuck with 65 blackjack all right guys we are entering the home stretch on the road to 100k subscribers if you are not subscribed yet please fake monk bracelet scam oh this is a classic this used to be at airports. Then they got rid of these guys at airports, so now they must do it in Vegas. Let's see if it's what I think it is. Confusion. They're going to put a bracelet on you, and they're going to start pestering you for money. Yep. Or even if they do speak English, which they probably do, they're going to say, hey, this look at this beautiful temple. It's just down Spring Mountain Road. I'm going to take you there. Uh, here's a bracelet. I need like a $40 donation, maybe even more than that. And next thing you know, you're getting haggled and 
you don't even want this bracelet and there's really not a temple down the street wow. so watch out for those fake monks i don't want to bag too much on the showgirls you take a picture with them they're going to expect a tip you may think it's a dollar or five dollars no negotiate with them first be respectful can't afford whatever they so, want so charge. basically what this is is you're always going to run into people on the street and they're going to offer you something supposedly for free and it's not so they used to do this. I remember in, in the 90s when I flew with my parents, they, these guys existed. They're not really Tibetan monks. Why? The, so think of it this way. Why would a real monk be in Las Vegas hassling you with a bracelet? Do you really think that's what real monks do? No. They're at the temple. They're worshiping. They're doing things that have to do with their religion. They're not trying to sell you bracelets. Okay? It's a complete 100% scam. So... They are not real monks. They're fakers. They slap a bracelet on your arm and then they say, hey, you got to pay us for that. I'm going to take you to a temple and stuff. And then they don't. And then they keep harassing you all day till you pay them to go away. It's a complete and utter scam. So I used to, I remember that in the 90s. I saw fake monks at airports when I was flying around with my parents going to like Florida and stuff. Totally. <clears throat> okay. All right, guys, so on the last video, Norma touched on timeshares, and all of you guys are aware of the timeshares and how annoying they are, but right now, I'm going to give you the hotspots in which where you can find them. The number one place that I can think of, first of all, is... Here. I don't really care too much about timeshares. Do you know what a timeshare is? So basically, a timeshare is when you don't own a place, but you pay as if you do, and you only have a certain amount of time you can use it. So let's say once a year, you want to go on vacation. So you pay to have this place that you have ownership of it for like a week a year and you go there on vacation, but then you don't own it for the rest of the year. But it's a rip. It's a real rip off. Um, let's see here. Paying for resort fees. That's bullshit you can't avoid. So what resort fees are when you're staying at any kind of a luxury area. For example, let's say you're in Las Vegas or let's say you're at Universal Studios or you're at Disneyland. You'll stay at a hotel and they'll be like, oh, there's a resort fee. They're like, what the fuck is that? It's literally nothing. They're charging you a premium on your bill that is absolutely nothing. You get nothing for it. But they're claiming because you're staying at a hotel near like a tourism area, they have the right to charge you more money. In reality, it's just bullshit. There's really no reason for that at all, but they just do it because they can get away with it. It's really fucked up. Money grab game tourist trip. What is that? That one I don't know. Have some fun, and we're walking right, right by right now. Oh, I've seen these the, before. Uh, money madness store right here. So they have these money madness machines where it blows cash in a box, and then you're supposed to corral it into a small clear box. And in 30 seconds, you get as much cash. Now it's not real cash, it's fake cash. $30 for 30 seconds, and you try to get all that cash. And then at the end, you count it, and then they have different tiers. Like if you got $2,000, $3,000, you can exchange it for a watch or headphones or some other electronics. $30 for 30 seconds? I don't know. Definitely a tourist trap, yeah. in my opinion. Definitely a ripoff because you 30 can... just think about that $30 for only 30 seconds of trying to grab fake money. Then all they're gonna do is give you a reward, they don't give you the money, right? They just give you the uh, uh, like it's like a redemption game deal. That's a ripoff, you just buy your kid that stuff, exactly. Just go buy it. And that's the other thing like when you go to an arcade or whatever and they have the games, the, the games of skill to win, you'll spend way more money trying to win it that way than just going and buying it. So it's a complete ripoff. On sale, on Black Friday, on Amazon, or Best Buy. Another possible scam or ripoff that may happen here in Vegas happens on this bridge sometimes. It's these religious books. I don't know if they're comic books or religious pamphlets. Huh. During the weekends when it's busy here, I see them posted up, especially during my live stream. I'm good, thanks, man. You got it, cool guy. <laughs> That guy was trying to get me to go to Dick's. They're usually posted up around here where they're pa handing out those pamphlets. I don't know if they're looking for money or looking for you to join their religion or the cult. Now, I don't know if they're doing it for the true grace of whoever <laughs> God or whatever they follow. The true grace, of that's course. That's one of my question mark ripoffs and... All right. We got another one. Hotel convenience store. For oh, forget that. Yeah. Whenever you're at a hotel, any of these resort hotels, they'll always have like a convenience store in the lobby. Never shop there. The prices are like a toothbrush will be like fifteen dollars. I'm serious. They do it on purpose because they claim it's convenience. So you're gonna pay an insanely exorbitant markup on anything. A, a candy bar will be like seven dollars, and it's worth like it's fifty cents at the grocery store around the corner. So definitely don't shop there. That I that I know. Ooh, pickpocketing in crowds. Okay. Inebriated, under the influence of something, or just people not paying attention, looking up at the buildings. Next thing you know, you look down and your cell phone or your wallet or your belongings are missing because you just got had, you just got pickpocketed. Crowded areas like Planet Hollywood, right in front of the horseshoe. 
it can get very crowded, especially Fridays, Saturdays, especially at night. So you might want to watch yourself, like put your wallet up front, put your cell phone up front. Don't let anything show or be exposed. Just be aware. This is very true. Whenever you're in a crowded uh, metropolitan area with a lot of people, never put anything in your back pocket and never have anything sticking out of your back pocket. Too easy to take. At least if it's in your front pocket, they gotta fully put their hand into your pocket and you'll feel it and you can stop it. You can't stop, that back pocket shit's too risky. Of pickpockets, cause they're still here. It's not just in places like Barcelona, it exists here too. So we're going down this escalator. You can see those cones right there and you see those dudes in the very end. Well, they're this like hip hop dance group that do a show and do some dances and tricks and all that. But what they do is they say, hey, we're a group and each of us deserve, you know, at least 10 to 20 bucks. When you're watching it, they're gonna ask you for like 60 to $80, maybe even more wow. than that. So make sure you just watch out over here by the Miracle Mile shops. It's actually pretty funny because these dudes, they say, wouldn't you rather be giving me the money now instead of prowling around your house, prowling around your neighborhood? They have some sort of joke like that. At least I'm here dancing and not stealing your stuff from your house. I don't know, I don't get it, but still. The next tip <laughs> is a scam. And I'm gonna credit Norma Helly for this one because she oh, told really? me that there was a person over at Paris and maybe even Planet Hollywood. Well, it was a Caesars property. Now, when you go check out and you insert your parking ticket here, if you have a Nevada ID or a players club, you can actually get your three hours free or your free parking. There is either a lady or a guy that will come here and try to scam you and use their ID or their rewards card. And they'll scan it here and it'll say, all good and then they'll be like hey can you throw me like 20 bucks or 10 bucks whatever i saved you this much amount of money and then you give them the money and then you go out to check out at the gate but what you need is their id or their rewards card ah. still, and you're stuck at the gate and then you're gonna end up having to play, pay double because you didn't have their id or their rewards card so don't ever fall for wow that is dirty so they think like they're doing you a favor. Look, I gave you free parking. Can you toss me a few bucks? You saved a lot of money. Then you go and you can't even get out. Wow, that's dirty. See, people do this shit all the time. I remember, so I was in Chicago, all right? And I'm in Chicago at a tourism area and this guy walks up to me and he goes, hey, I got, I got this newspaper. It's for like a school or something. So he hands it to me. I didn't ask for it. He goes, oh, can I have a donation? So you give him like $5 to go away and you look at it it's like a ratty piece of paper. It's not even like legit. It's like a piece of junk. Like, what is this? This isn't even like a new article or anything. This guy probably just went and stole a bunch of shit and he's handing it out telling you, oh, it's like an important thing for a school. Can you give a donation for the school? It's not. The guy's just fucking scamming you. I did. I got totally fooled in Chicago by shit like that. People are always out to make a buck. Always out to make a buck. Pretty ridiculous. Okay. Get money from you Anything while else you're here? trying to check out and validate your ticket at one of these machines. But let me tell you a little more about Las Vegas parking on the Strip and downtown. Here's the down low on Caesars Palace and Forum Shop. I don't really care too much about parking prices. It looks like that's what this whole segment's about. Anything else? Oh, CD guy scam. Oh, this is another one. They try to sell you a CD that claims their music and it's not. I've heard stories where the server will be like, okay, I'll get my manager and my manager will take it out. So treat people with kindness and they'll take care of it. A little bonus scam. I talked about this in the past, but the CD guys are back and they're in front of the Shake Shack over here near New York, New York. So watch out for the CD guys. And who still owns the CD player? Comment down below. If you're on Facebook, check out Las Vegas. That's it. Yeah, the CD guys, what it is is they'll say, oh, I'm an independent artist. Here you could have my CD they'll give it to you and then they're like well can I have a donation so they'll demand money then come to find out the CD's fake it's not even real you just got scammed there's a fucking piece there's nothing on it <laughs> that shit happens too alright <clears throat> alright so guys that is the ultra member submissions for the week now we're gonna move on to the general submissions these are the ones that everyone had equal uh, chance to, to get watched here I put them into a playlist and uh, let's get that playlist up and running here we're gonna hit shuffle, and here we go. Let's see what happens here. The 1980s was all about big hair, big music, big movies, and big trends. Snacks and foods in the 80s were the same way. Oh. Well, minus the hair part. People still enjoyed items from previous decades. Hell yeah. Were... In the 80s, oh wow, this is a long video. We probably won't watch the whole thing. In the 80s, there was so many tie-in products anything anything pop culture anything 
that was a movie. Anything that was TV, you had a cereal, you had a bunch of food items, you had the, the meal at, at McDonald's or Burger King that was the tie up, right? So, all right, let's see what we got. Pac Man cereal, crunchy, sweet, and corn cereal with marshmallow bits. So the ghosts are the marshmallows? Yeah, but there's also Pac Man heads. Look at that. And get a hat, a free, with, yeah, a free with UPC symbols, a freaking hat or something. Is that a hat? I don't know what that is. It looks like a hat. Huh. Some new things. This video. Oh, Ecto Cooler. I told you guys about Ecto Cooler. So it was green, but it tasted like citrus, like a citrus flavor. And later on, they made it into just, I think they called it like Lava Blast, orange Lava Blast. Because some of the foods that helped shape the 80s, some of these are still around, and some of them are long gone. This, I remember. Handy snacks, they there still have that. There are very few kids who don't like pudding. Instant, is actually instant pudding. They probably don't sell this anymore, do they? Instant? You just gotta buy the liquid one. They used to have instant pudding that was powdered. You would add ingredients to make it. And plain pudding, frozen pudding. Jello pops, I used to eat those. Companies had recipes on how you can make pudding pops way back in the 60s. However, oh, really? it wasn't until 1979 when General Foods decided to give it a try themselves. They released Jello pudding pops, and thanks to a famous spokesman named Bill yep. Cosby, he was they the really big Jello pudding guy back in the day. They came in chocolate, vanilla, and chocolate and vanilla swirl. They somehow pushed these as like they're healthier than ice cream. I don't know why anyone thought they were, but they were like, yeah, the pudding pops are better than ice cream, so you should eat this because it's better for you. But I don't think they really were. These delicious popsicles remained popular until they were discontinued in the 1990s. Oh, I didn't even know that. Somehow, they just weren't making a profit off of these tasty treats. One of the 80s coolest snack bars was the peanut butter bopper. I think I had this in before. In 1985 by General Mills. I did have this before. They're crunchy. They're, it's like a flavored peanut butter crunch thing on the outside. And then it would have... Uh, this like like this cream on the inside. I remember these. Yeah, I totally remember these. Originally, they were available in fudge chip, honey crisp. Oh wow, I never had any. I just had the peanut butter. In 1986, they added fudge graham and cookie crunch to the lineup. The bars had a soft, creamy center made of real peanut butter that would melt in your mouth. I, I remember these. The these are super good. Was where all the crunchy flavors were at. Within 90 days of their release, they captured 9% of the snack market. Wow. Sadly, these are no longer available in the grocery stores. I wonder why, because they're super good. If you were a cookie lover in the 80s, oh, there was I ate a good these chance before. you tried the Keebler Magic Middles. So what it was, it was a Keebler cookie that was supposed to be like, you know, Keebler elves would make like, like chocolate chip cookies or whatever, but it would be a stuffed cookie with cream in the middle, and they had all different flavors. There was chocolate, there was peanut butter, there was like a white filling. There's all these different ones. I totally remember these. I love these. Kids everywhere seem to have them in their lunch boxes. Yeah. These were shortbread cookies with either fudge or peanut butter filling Very in the center. Very unhealthy for you, though. Despite their popularity, they were discontinued so they could use the equipment that manufactured them for another item. People have been wanting these to relaunch for years, and there's even a Facebook page that's dedicated to make it wow. happen. However, these cookies are still missing in action. Damn, I like those. Those were good. The 1980s saw a full-blown war going on with sodas. Coca-Cola is one of the most successful soda companies in the world. Can't beat the real thing. I remember. I remember the, all the theme songs for this shit. The brand is recognized almost all over the world, but in the 1980s, the company <clears throat> experimented with some new products. Coca-Cola already had a diet cola named Tab, I never which had was Tab. popular, but in 1982 they came out with Diet Coke. This contained artificial sweeteners instead of sugar, and it took over the market by... Ah, the soda one's boring. What's next? New Coke, that's boring too. Bubble gum. Dr. Pepper. Hershey bar. Let's go to more candy. The candy's interesting. Hershey Bar Nun was a chocolate bar that was released in California in 1986. Did I ever have and it went Bar nationwide Nun? In 1987. It sounds familiar. The original formula was a cocoa wafer, chocolate filling, peanuts, and a milk chocolate coating. Hmm. In 1992, the product was reformulated I've seen into it, but two I don't know wafers if I've ever had with chocolate it. coating, peanuts, and caramel. It was discontinued in 1997 with little fanfare, but you can still find it sold in Mexico. Wow, no, I don't think I've ever had it. Do you remember Tato Skins made by Keebler? Maybe. They were released in the mid-80s, and they were made from potato peels. Huh. Eventually, they added cheddar cheese and bacon, sour cream and chives, and barbecue by the later part of the 80s. 
these snacks. What's by... weird about this is your Keebler, and Keebler was cookies, so then they made a chip. That's kind of weird that they were making a chip instead of cookies. Keebler are long gone, huh. but there are some similar ones made by a restaurant chain. Oh, named yeah, I've seen, the, I've seen the TGIF ones. Yeah. The 1980s saw some products that were completely Fruit roll ups. I ate like crazy when I was were a kid. Definitely one of those. Yes. They were made by Fruit Corners and can I still be found like in crazy. supermarkets today. But the company also had another product they introduced in 1986 called Fruit Wrinkles. I These had those too. I had Fruit Wrinkles and Fruit Roll Ups. I ate both of those when I was a kid. Absolutely, I did. I was crazy for these. Were pieces of wrinkled fruit that came in little packages. They sort of rode in on the coattails of the popular California raisins that were all over the place ah. in the mid 1980s. Kids everywhere were singing the song, wearing the shirts, and collecting the figures, as well as various other types of merchandise. Were you a fan of Hostess Pudding Pies? Didn't have these. These came in chocolate and vanilla and were quite popular for a while because I've they were so different. I've seen these, but I don't think I ever had a pudding They have been pie. discontinued by Hostess. But I did have the Ninja Turtles version. I wonder if they'll show that because there was a Ninja Turtles version that was disgusting. There are some other lesser-known bakery brands that still make them. No. Bonkers was oh, a popular Oh, dude, Bonkers were huge. I ate Bonkers all the time. So it would have an outer layer. It's a chewy candy, okay? The outer layer was a lighter color, and the inner center was a stronger flavor. And you would buy... Oh, I loved Bonkers. I ate these all the time, dude. Like, totally all the time. It was introduced in the mid-1980s. Very flavorful. Oh, look, they're Ninja Turtles. They say Ninja Turtles on If you remember the commercials, they feature people who would have giant fruit fall and bonk them on the head. It came in assorted fruit flavors as well as chocolate. They seemed sort of like a piece of gum, but it was actually a chewy piece of candy. Yeah, it was candy. The product is no longer sold, but there have been constant rumors of its comeback. I ate, I ate those all the time when I was a kid. In Seriously. 1983, Cheetos released a new flavor of their popular snack. It was bacon flavored, Ooh. and it was released in the crunchy and the puffs. They are no longer on the market, but Chester does have bacon cheddar fries. I've never had get bacon Cheetos. That doesn't sound very good. It's probably very artificial. Nabisco yet. seemed like they were always coming out with something new, and in the 80s, they had Swiss cheese crackers. No, I never had that. These had Swiss holes cheese. like a real piece of Swiss cheese, Nabisco but the cracker, flavor didn't nah. quite match up with the cheese. The they were still cheesy, crisp, and delicious, though. They have been discontinued, but occasionally you'll see some other brands that have something bacon similar. Bacon flavored things? I don't see those either. In 1984, PepsiCo introduced Slice, slice which that sounds was a soft familiar. Drink made with real fruit juice. Well, a small percentage of fruit juice, anyways. Huh. This sweet fizzy drink was a big success, but the product disappeared from the shelves in 2005. Yeah, they I remember Slice. I think my great aunt used to buy this, and I used to drink it when I went over her house. I'm almost positive that I used to drink Slice at my, my great aunt's house when I visited. company named New Slice Ventures LLC acquired the rights, so you may still see some of these in Canada and the U.S. Huh. In the mid-80s, Keebler came out with Tribbles, which was a little bite-sized cookies in a little package. Nah, I don't think I've had that. It Tribbles? Chocolate chip and Aren't mint chocolate Tribbles and were from often Star found Trek? in vending machines. By the turn of the 90s, they had completely disappeared. Huh. If you lived in the 80s, then I'm sure yes, you could not escape the Burger War that was going yes, on. Yes, it was. This war had been going on since the 50s when Burger King released their Whopper sandwich. But Wendy's came on strong with a line of commercials the that beef? used the slogan, Where's the beef? McDonald's was still trying to crush out the competition. In 1984, they released the McDLT. I don't remember this. I mean, I was only two years old, so that's probably why. The McDLT? The lettuce stays crisp, the tomato firm and juicy because our special package keeps the trimmings cool on one side and the hamburger hot on the other until you put them together. What? <laughs> put it together yourself? That's weird. It came right? in a unique styrofoam package that kept one side hot and the other side cool. What the hell? The bottom bun had the meat on That's one side weird. and the other side had the top bun, what a weird lettuce, package. tomato, cheese, pickles, People say Jason sauces. Alexander did the commercial for the this? Really? The would then combine the two for a fresher taste. That's ridiculous. This burger became really popular, but McDonald's discontinued it in late 1990 because of the styrofoam packaging. Ah. The 80s also Mr. T cereal, I had this before. Connected with movies yep. or shows. I never had C3PO's. C3PO's. I had Mr. T cereal. It was launched in 1984, about a year after the movie Return of the Jedi came out. Rainbow Bright. Oh my Rainbow God, cereal, Rainbow was Bright cereal? Ralston. No, I never had that. Post I never had the Smurf Smurf cereal Berry either. Crunch, which was a fruity red and blue cereal that came out in 1983. 
A few years later, Smurf Magic Berries made their debut with mini marshmallows. Even I had this. Got in on the cereal market. This was cool. The Nintendo cereal system. So at the time, you know, Nintendo had some really notable games. And Zelda and Mario Brothers were the two big ones. So you buy this and you get two cereals in one box. It would actually separate in the middle, right in the middle. It would be pretty cool. And then you have two completely different cereals. By the way, neither of them were great. <laughs> they really weren't. They weren't that good. I think one was fruity and one was a little different. But neither of them were great. In the late 80s with their two-in-one Super Mario Brothers and Zelda-themed cereal. Keeping on the topic of cereals, you may Dinky remember Dinky Donuts? Donuts cereal, which was hmm. released in 1980 by Ralston Perina. Nah, I don't think I the ever had this. featured kids in suits and business attire who acted like <laughs> executives giving expert opinions on the cereal. In the early 80s, Kellogg's came out with banana frosted oh, flakes. Oh, I didn't, never heard of sweet, this. But it never quite caught on, and it only lasted on the shelves for about... Oh, I had this. I definitely had the Ghostbuster cereal, where it was... This, the, the, who you're gonna call, like, the, the symbol no ghosts. The symbol was the crunchy oat part, and then there were ghost marshmallows. Yes, I remember. Here's how I remember this. The ghost marshmallows would melt in your milk within moments. So you put it in there. If you're not eating it right away, the ghost would shrink as you're eating your morning cereal. I totally remember that. For years. But the 80s did see some successful cereals released. General Mills introduced cinnamon oh, this toast is huge. in 1984. This was huge America back has then. been eating this crunchy this cereal ever since. Not only did Tops make the bubble gum in your baseball cards or garbage pail kids cards, but they also made the gum that came in the little juice cartons. I never had juice cartons. There was no though. kid in the 80s huh. that could resist these. It came in different flavors like grape, orange, and apple. The flavor was incredible for about 30 seconds, and then you would have to chow on more until you had the whole carton gone in about two minutes. By the way, so a lot of people are commenting. I wanted to keep the video moving, though. Yes, I've had Fruit by the Foot. Fruit by the Foot was good. I, I actually preferred Fruit Roll-Ups better because Fruit by the Foot tasted more generic and artificial, while Fruit Roll-Ups actually tasted more like the real fruit it was supposed to be. Yes, I've had Gushers. I actually really liked them, but sadly, Gushers got worse over time, and they put less of the fruit filling in them and it didn't taste as good anymore. I used to have fruit snacks all the time when I was a kid. Um, all kinds of stuff, yeah. No, Fruit by the Foot is not Fruit Roll-Ups. Fruit Roll-Ups was one brand. Fruit by the Foot was a competitor's brand. And Fruit by the Foot ended up enduring longer than Fruit Roll-Ups, I believe. Uh, let's get past the gum. Oreo Big Stuff? Oh, man. It was introduced in 1984, and it was sold in a box of 10. Giant it was on cookies. the market for about seven years before it was discontinued. I never had that. Look at that. Since that time, Oreo has always experimented with different cookies. Oreo, if you're listening, Giant I think cookie. it might be time for a comeback on this big cookie. During the 80s, the McDLT wasn't the only experiment McDonald's had. The McRib, had. the McRib they still have In 1981, to this day. they released a McRib, yep. and it has been on and off the menus ever since. It's not actually a rib, but rather nope. processed pork meat covered in barbecue sauce in a bun. That's the best part. They call it the McRib. There's no rib meat in it. It's just processed generic pork meat, and it's not very good. People usually get excited when the sandwich returns. In 1983, McDonald's also released the chicken McNuggets. Oh, that's when they did it, huh? These deep-fried pieces of chicken have been on the menu ever since, and almost every kid has eaten them at one time And they're, they're so different today. It's yeah, look. 25 years of McNuggets... The original Chicken McNugget was dark meat chicken fried in this smooth breading. It was crispy, but it was so juicy when you bit into it. The meat had tons of chicken flavor because it tasted like dark meat chicken. Today you get a, a, a fucking McNugget at McDonald's. It's like white meat dry chicken, and the breading is like swollen off, not even sticking to the McNugget. It's gr like Seriously, the McNuggets back then were so good compared to what you get today. Today they just suck. All right, guys. This is a good time to split the part. We want now watch this video for quite some time, but it was a good one. Thanks to those watching the show here live. I hope you're enjoying the show. I am. I'm having a great time with all of you. And uh, three more parts coming on this week's episode of DSP versus the Internet. Uh, remember, if you're watching this on demand on YouTube, you can support this effort by liking the video, leaving comments, or becoming a member yourself. Then you'll be the people to nominate these videos for next week. All right, guys. Thank you so much. See you soon.